Welcome to The New Journey, the program where we meet real life people with real life testimonies doing real life ministry for Jesus Christ. I'm your host, Pastor Marquise Johns. Come join us on The New Journey. In the Gospels, Jesus calls us to be disciples. Many are called, few are chosen. But in between the call and the answering of the call, the devil puts in a call as well. On our program today, we have David Butler, someone who heard the call, but unfortunately, for a time, answered the wrong call to discipleship and became a gangster disciple. David, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you good, doing? Good, good, good. Now, we, we've already kind of talked about the fact that mm -hmm. we just need to know a few things. Right. Have you actually been to jail? Oh, no. no, I'm joking. <laughs> you know, the reality is our audience today needs to be aware of the fact that there are and is the possibility of having lived a life, answering the call to Jesus, and living a completely different life. Tell us where you're from. I'm from Kankakee, Illinois. Mm. But I live in uh, Mary, Illinois now. Okay, okay. So at some point, again, you heard the call, a mm. call from somewhere. Right. And it took a turn. Tell us about the turn. Tell us, tell us a little bit about your story, where you're from. Tell us a little bit. Come on. Okay, well, um, it happened around when I was 15 years okay. old. Okay. Um, I started selling dope at a, I guess that's a young age, you mm -hmm. know. Um, when I was 15 years old, I had my license. So my dad, um, I had a, a Cadillac Broham. Wait, wait, hold on. Cadillac Broham at yeah. 15? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This so, had to have just led to a whole host of trouble. Yes, it did. <laughs> That's why you shouldn't let no kid drive nothing like that. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? But but it did. But like I said, I start, um, I start selling dope. Mm -hmm. You know, got got, start hanging around with the wrong people. Start mm -hmm. drinking. Start doing a lot of stuff that I shouldn't mm -hmm. shouldn't have been doing. Now, did you start doing these things because you felt like you had something to prove to somebody? I mean, w was your family underprivileged? Were you in the ghetto? W why, nah. why did you start selling drugs? Nah. Um, like I said, I, my, my dad worked, he did drywall. Okay. So that, that's, that's my trade. Okay. But um, I've always been this, this, this rebellion, you know okay. what I mean? I, I didn't have to do it, I just did it. Okay. And the, the good thing about it, I had my own money, so I didn't have to front from nobody. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? So it's like I was raised a certain way, but I didn't want to listen to it, so I just went to the bad. Mm -hmm. And I always been, I ain't never been no, no follower. I always been the leader because even though I was in the gang and, and you know, you got, you got codes and stuff you got to live by. Right. I still, I'll, I'll be a renegade in a minute, you know what right. I mean? Because I'm, I'm a man before anything. Right, so. right. So, so let me ask a question. So you get into this lifestyle, you start selling little drugs, you know, and, and you just kind of waltz through it without right. any incident. Everything is okay. You sell drugs, you mm -hmm. stop selling drugs, and here you are today. Mm -hmm. Were there anything, anything that happened in life, in your life, that you could tell us about? I mean, like, I'm looking at you, bruh, mm -hmm. and you got, you got a hole right here and mm -hmm. a hole right here. What, what happened? How did you, how did you get uh -huh. those? Well, um... Around the time I was like 22, 23, okay. uh, I got in a shootout with some Land Kings. You got into a shootout? Yeah, with, with some Land Kings. So, okay. um, wait, wait, so, so wait, we, we need, let's, let's just um, do some little, a little disambiguation, if you will. Mm -hmm. You were a gang member. What gang were you a member of? Uh, Gangster Disciples. Gangster Disciples. Yeah. And so you said you had a shootout with... Uh, Land, Land Kings. So you guys obviously liked each other a lot. Nah, we don't like each okay. other at all. <laughs> okay, you know I mean? so, you, so you're 22, you're 23, there's the shootout, mm -hmm. Gangster Disciples on one side, Latin Kings on the other, pick mm -hmm. it up from there. So, uh, like I said, we got in the shootout, so when the shootout was over with... Uh, on the Saturday, Saturday came up, I, was, I went to a, um, a gun auction to okay. buy more guns, bought an AK, bought a 9, bought a, um, and put beams. You know, you know how yeah. I got the beams. So I was going home, I, I left there and I was going home to um, get these other guns that I wanted to put these beams on. Mm -hmm. So I, I had, you know, I got a... I had a um, wait. Let, 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 again, so you said beams. You're talking about the infrared beam yeah, that infrared we see, on beam. like the, the yeah. Marines and stuff. Yeah. Have. So you you're strapping up for war. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, I left there and went to go get the other guns. So I, I'm in my Chevy Caprice and my the other my other um, homeboys they're behind me. Um, 
So I'm driving, I'm doing like 90. You know, we got the, and it's kind of raining that day. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of lost control and I hit a curve. Okay. And went in the air doing 90. Okay. I hit two cars and hit the front porch of a house. Wow. Knocked the whole front porch of a house off. Wow. wow. So my car leaning against the, the door of the house. Okay. So I jumped out. Wow. Um, a friend of mine was here first. And on the floor, I pulled him out. He kept going in and out. Mm -hmm. I jumped out like this. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I had whiplash. Mm -hmm. So um, come to find out, I ain't had no license. So okay. I know I'm finna go to jail. Okay. So the police come. They, um, they asked me, do I want to go to the hospital? I'm all like, no, nah, I'm, I'm all right. So I'm going down to the county. They arrest me. Mm -hmm. But, um, but th the grace of God, God kept having the police asking me, mm -hmm. you sure you don't want to go to the hospital? Okay. So I'm all like, okay, I'll go. I figure if I go right now, I'm going to get arrested right now. Okay. So I pull over, ambulance get me, get to the hospital. They x-rayed me. I broke my C2 back here. Oh, wow. So, um. Wow, wow. So I'm in the hospital, uh -huh. and they telling my family, when you talk over them, make sure you lean over them and talk. Because mm -hmm. they said, um, I ain't going to make it through the night. Mercy. But they said, if I do make it through the night, Mercy. I'm going to be paralyzed from my neck down. Mercy. But God was, was, was merciful for me. So, 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 so let, me, let me just paint the picture here. So, again, um, mortal enemies, Latin kings, gangster disciples, you guys are getting ready to get into a shootout. Right. You're on your way with the intent to take someone's life. Right. You get into an accident. Go into the hospital, and by the grace of God, mm -hmm. you're able to weather that storm. And here you are, because you walked in here today, right? Right. You know, right, so you walked in here right. today. So is that when is that when God began to kind of work on you, or did you have to learn another lesson or two? He he started, mm -hmm. but being that hard here person I am, I still had to learn another lesson. Too. Okay, so tell us about that lesson. So this three four years, this I'm probably I'm in my thirties. Um, for the first time in my life, I don't have no job. Even when I tried to hustle, that didn't even go good. Now, let me ask you a question. Were you trying to get jobs? Yeah. Okay. Did, did, did the tattoos, because probably at home you can't mm -hmm. see, but mm -hmm. you have tattoos up to your neck. Yeah. Did the tattoos uh, kind of prevent you from getting jobs, maybe? I don't know. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I mean, when, when I look at it, when I look back at it now, no, tattoo didn't stop. Okay. Now, I know, I know, I know. Now, God was like, no, because I, I, I believe the Lord just had to break me. Okay. You know what I mean, I had to really be bro broken. Okay. So, um, like I said, I don't have no job. Mm -hmm. Trying to, trying to hustle. Even that wasn't working. Okay. So all of a sudden, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona at the time. Now. Okay. All of a sudden, um, a friend of mine um, called me to come to Marion, Illinois. Mm -hmm. So he's like, man, I got a house. You come help me do this house. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, um, I leave, I leave Phoenix, come to Mary, Illinois. And um, I did the house, made like 1600 Okay. Bought me a truck. After that, no more jobs. Okay. No, nothing this time. Okay. But now, I'm, now, now, even though I, all the wild stuff that I did, man, I knew that I had to some way, one day get right with God. Okay. So that kept on bothering me. Okay. You know what I mean? So um, I'm staying with his parents. Okay. So, like I said, I wake up 7 in the morning, I'm drinking, playing DMX, you know, I got the rap music on, uh -huh, uh -huh. acting a fool, you know. Um, so, <laughs> I can't find no job, mm -hmm. running out of the little money I got left. So, okay. I, I, I'm thinking, I said, you know what, I'm just going to start collecting cans. Okay. I said, I, I figured I'd go late at night to Walmart, whatever, look mm -hmm. through the garbage, collect cans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was, I was really, at that point, but I didn't want to go back selling dope. Right. I mean, I could make a phone call. Right. And right, I could have been right. back on like and, I never left. And let me, I want to pause this for a moment. You said you could make a phone call and probably pick up right where you left off. Where, where do you have any brothers, any siblings, anything like that? Do you, I mean, yes, yes, it, it's eleven of us. I got six sisters. I got four other brothers. Where are your brothers at um, during this time and, and, and even to today? Today, uh, right now, I got one that been in prison ever since he was eighteen. He like 48, 49 years old. Wow. He in Texas. I got another brother that in prison right now. And he in prison in the wheelchair with, with prostate cancer, you know my what I mean? Lord. And he, um, what, in his 50s, you know wow. what I mean? Like I said, all, all, all my brothers, they been in and out all their life. Okay. So that's another thing I looked at. Even though I did stuff, I was just trying to be smarter. Like, I don't got time to be going to jail. Right. You know what I mean? So, so, so you know, um, you, you go through this terrible accident. All your brothers, you know, you got brothers that you look up to, they're in jail. And now here you are, um, down on your luck, if you will, mm -hmm. Jobless, and you're out collecting cans at the local Walmart. Right. Pick up from there. So, okay, 
I ain't start collecting cans yet. Okay, okay. So I've been drinking. So I know outside of, because I'm living in this trailer. Mm -hmm. And my homeboy, um, they in the house. Mm -hmm. But outside the trailer is a garbage can. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, okay, I'm going to collect cans. I'm going to start in the morning and get all these cans since I've been drinking. Mm -hmm. But someone was urging me to go check the garbage can now. Mm -hmm. I said, man, I ain't finna do it. I do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. But was, do it now. I'm like, nah, I'll do it in the morning. So morning came. Like I said, I woke up, 7 o'clock, drinking, got my rap music on, I went to the garbage can. And when I opened the garbage can, I found these two CDs. Okay. So, well, DVDs. Okay. And the beer sitting on top of it. Okay. So it said Mafia 1, Mafia 2. So I'm thinking like, oh, man, I'm finna watch some gangster movies. Right, right. You know what I mean? So I'm really hyped now. Right. So I put, it, I put Mafia 2 in. And it wasn't a DVD. It was, a, it was a CD, but that plays in a um, disc player. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So as, as it start opening up, it was, the te it was a man from um, New York City that was in the mob. Mm -hmm. He was Italian, and he was giving his testimony how he met Jesus Christ. My Lord. And he was going through every, everything. His life was like mine. Okay. And everything he was went through is just see how, even though he was so messed up and lost, God still loved him and, and pulled him. And, man, it just touched my spirit so wow. hard wow. that, man, I just started crying like a little baby. I got on my knees and repented to the Lord about everything. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. So, so right then and there, I know I was saved. Mercy. Okay. So, so, so I start going to Sunday. Okay. Well, let, 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 before we go there, let, let's, let's kind of, because I want to paint the picture okay. here. So we have this young man, 15, year old, 15 years old, um, doing drywall. So you have a trade, if you will. Right. You're doing drywall. You know, you don't want to front for nobody. You ain't trying to put on for nobody. Right. You decide just to have some extra money and to, you know, be fly. You right. start selling drugs. Right. As you start selling drugs, you get into a gang, gangster disciples, mm -hmm. mortal enemies, Latin kings. Mm -hmm. You guys are getting into these skirmishes and these fights, and one day you decide you want to kill some of them. Mm -hmm. Boom, you get into a car accident. Right. You end up on your back right. for a little while. Right. You get up, and now you're trying to figure out how you can live your life better, and you start saying to yourself, hey, I need a job. No jobs are coming. Right. Decide you're going to look for cans. Mm -hmm. Now, all throughout this, are you seeing, again, because I, I just want to, I, I want us to begin to transition now. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing God's hands? Are you seeing, like, mm -hmm. before you even got the CDs, mm -hmm. were you able to see God's hands? Are you able to now look back mm -hmm. and see that the accident may have even been God's hand? It, um, when I look at it now, okay. while I was going through it, nah, you can't, I, I done learned when you're in darkness, you don't see nothing. Okay. You can't see nothing. Okay. You know what I mean? But when I look at it now, yeah, I see how God had, had his hand in everything that, that I did. Okay. You know because I mean? had you gone and killed some people, you may not have been here today. You'd be doing right. prison sentences right. like your brothers. Right. Or right. I could have died in my sin. There you go. Even worse. And so now, so we're on our knees. You're right. repentant. Right. You say, Lord, I, I feel the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. saved. Tell us now about your journey to Christ and what brings you here today. Okay. Um, like I said, I was, um, start going to church mm -hmm. and um, start reading, start reading my Bible, start re really getting in a relationship with God and really start reading my Bible. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in my life, like I read my Bible before, but mm -hmm. for the first time in my life, I saw Jesus in a new light. Okay. So I'm all like, okay. So by this time, I'm married now, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I go to my wife, because I'm going to her, her uncle's church. So I'm mm -hmm. all like, why aren't we doing what Jesus is doing? Why ain't we ain't, um, keeping the Sabbath and all that? Because that, mm. that what popped in my head, because that what the Lord showed me. And then doing more studies, he, start, he just showed me about the Sabbath, about the dead is dead, mm -hmm. and about um, when Jesus come back, how he going to come back. So wait a minute. So you started going through your Bible, mm -hmm. And by yourself, by I mean, myself. we know by the, by the right. power of the Holy Spirit, right. but by yourself, by you were able to come to these conclusions that the Sabbath was still binding, that the dead know not anything, yeah. and that there will be a, a, a visible no and rapture. audible right. re return right. of Jesus Christ. I start asking, I start asking people that have been saved for 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. and they couldn't give me no answer about nothing, about wow. nothing. Wow. So, so the red light went on, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm all like, something ain't right. Mm -hmm. And I continue praying and showing praying and reading, mm -hmm. and God just truly showed me. So one day, um, I get in my car to play, play the, get on the radio. Mm -hmm. Now, this one station that I used to listen to, it played nothing but cuss rap music. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to hear that no more. So mm -hmm. I'm just going through it. Mm -hmm. As I go, I stop at the station because they talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I listen to it, 
And the stuff that I had just learned, they start talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? About the Sabbath, the dead, ain't no rapture. You know, how mm -hmm. it gonna come. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I heard about Seven Day Adventists. Oh, wow. So I'm all like, I ain't never heard of them. Mm -hmm. I ain't never know what they mm -hmm. was about, nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm all like, yeah, that's, that's where I need to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, where can I find one? Mm -hmm. um, then one day I'm, it's a street out here called Old 13. I'm driving down Old 13. And um, I'm going east and the, 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 my friend dad, who I used to stay with, he going west. And as we pass, he got a truck. He got all these boxes in the back of this truck. And they flipped over. So he pulled into this church. So I pulled back around mm -hmm. and helped him, mm -hmm. got out. As I'm helping him, I look up, and the church said, Marion SDA, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Wow. So I said, wow. oh, okay, I'm coming here. Wow. So I ain't come to like three weeks later, okay. but I came. And it was different because I've been in a Sunday mm -hmm. all my life, so it's different just to see how they pray first mm -hmm. and really ask God to show them. And even when the, the whole congregation get together and how they pray and get on their knees. So I was scared at first because I'm all like, hold up. I don't know who they praying to. Wow. I'm like, Lord, I'm, a pray I'm praying to you. I don't know what they doing, mm -hmm. but I'm praying to you. Mm -hmm. But ever since then, man, God really been um, sharing knowledge with me and, and, and showing me things. So, so, so okay, so. So again, I, I just got to, I just like the picture. So we put to, you know, God puts to death the old life and you begin this new journey. Right. And in this new journey, you're reading your Bible. Mm -hmm. And as you're reading your Bible, you're coming to some conclusions about the Sabbath and the state of the dead mm -hmm. and the second coming and mm -hmm. sanctification. And, and you tune into a radio station mm -hmm. that is telling you about Jesus. Right. Now, now here's now, this is where I can be honest about my own story because the, the thing that resonates about your story is it's similar to mine. That's okay. why it resonates with me is that um, here I've been reading the Bible, you know, mm -hmm. uh, reading the Bible and I come to some conclusions about, hey, the Sabbath is still binding. Right. But here is, here, is, here is something that really, uh, that troubled me and, and, and troubles me even now as a pastor mm. is that typically no one is going into the neighborhoods right. that we sold drugs in right. and where we gangbang to tell us about Jesus. How do you... How right, right. Not, not, not only that, they don't even want to talk to mm -hmm. people like us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I ain't judging nobody, but I'm just saying, I can understand because it's wild over it there. It is. It you is. You know what I mean? So, so but, but that's, that's, that's how I feel um, like now. I want to go back to where I come from mm -hmm. and share, like, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. give, give glory to Jesus and, and just let them know the truth mm -hmm. and, get, and, and let the Holy, plant the seeds so the Holy Spirit could grow and, and bring them out. Right. Because they still God's children right. over there. So that there is the possibility and the potential for the Holy Spirit to do his job. The right. Holy Spirit can reveal truth to us right. without any human instrument. That's right. But then there should be the human instrument being used by God as well, right. Right? right? So that once you get that knowledge and you're looking for a Seventh-day Adventist mm -hmm. church, the mandate that we have been given by Jesus is mm -hmm. to go teach, right. baptize, teach. Right. And if somebody was going and, or coming to us, right. there's the possibility that you wouldn't have had to by, well, it wasn't right. by happenstance, right, right, right. but you could have known that the people of God with the light that you now cherish mm -hmm were right around the corner. Right. Right? Right. So, 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 okay, so now you have this light, you go to this church, you're at this church, so we know who you are. Mm -hmm. We know where you've been, how you got here. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about where you see yourself going. Man, I, I got the passion. I, I, I just, like I said, I, I, I just want to preach the word of God. Okay. I just want to let, let people hear the truth especially to people like me, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And in, in, in the ghetto, in the projects, you know, the down and out folks, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? To know the truth, because ain't nobody else doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, like, I like to go to, man, I like to go to Oakwood University, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I, I, I like to do whatever the Lord want me to do, because mm -hmm. like I said, I've been in the darkness and I don't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. So now, I mean, Jesus said we're here to serve. Right. So it, it's time for, it's time for us to get the understanding, get the knowledge, and go back out there. Right. You know what I mean, I just want the Lord to equip me so I can go back out there and pull more before probation closes. Right, right. So you're saying you want to go and be equipped to be right. a minister so that you can go back to the Magnolia Projects right. of New Orleans. You can go back into right. Memphis. You can go to South Central. You can right. go to Queens. You can go to those places right. where no one is going or people who have the knowledge may just be, and, and rightfully so sometimes, right. maybe a little afraid to go into those areas mm -hmm. because they don't know what those areas are about. But you, right. having been there, right. know what they're about. Right. And you're now saying, Lord, equip me right. 
equip me so that I can go. And, and, and a young man doesn't have to start selling drugs at 15. Mm -mm. He doesn't have to get into a car accident mm -hmm. while going to kill some Latin kings. Right. He doesn't have to uh, come to a point in his life where he says, I'm going to go into trash cans right. in order to make a living so that I don't sell dope. You're right. saying now, Lord, equip me mm -hmm. with the knowledge and the necessary know-how that I can go and reach back. And, and Jesus says in the book of Peter, he says, and, and called out of darkness right. into marvelous light. Right. And so, so now you're, you're at church and here you are today telling us your story. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and it's a remarkable story. Mm -hmm. It's a remarkable story. If you could, if you could, if there was a young man right now, a young mm -hmm. man like you mm -hmm. that was right now somewhere listening to this program, mm -hmm. watching this program, David, if you could say anything in the world to them, I want you right now to just look into the, I want you to, I want you to speak to David, mm -hmm. David Butler, 15 year old David Butler. Mm -hmm. I want you to look, I want you to look right now and I want you to speak to 15 year old David Butler and I want you to tell him what you wish someone had told you. Mm -hmm. um, b basically, no matter where you're at right now, no matter what you're doing in your life, God love you, Jesus love you. He didn't die for no reason. This, you just, you just gotta, you gotta hold on. Stop what you're doing. Stop following the world. Stop following the twins. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to gang bang. You don't have to drink. You don't have to uh, make babies and, and and leaving leaving your kids to to be with other folks. You don't gotta do none of that. You know what I mean? But but the Lord is here for us all. All we gotta do is be brave enough to to accept it, acknowledge Him, and, and, and walk into it. But no matter what you done did, I don't care what you done did. Jesus loves you. He, he will forgive you. You know what I mean? But we, we just got to be careful not to fall for the tricks of Satan. Hmm. You know, and a lot of us don't even know it's a Satan out there. You know what I mean? So a lot of us just deceive about, about everything about life, thinking this, we just here to have a job, make money, this and that. We ain't, we ain't here for none of that. We just here, oh, this is the setting stage. We just here to get our allegiance to Jesus, and that's it, and go home. You know what I mean? But like I said, a lot of folks don't even know that. You know, this thing, go to work, come home, pay the bills, and that's it. It's mm -hmm. way more than life than that. That's mm -hmm. not even life. Right. I mean, you right. dead already. You, you just walking dead, don't even know it. Right. Right. You know, so. Well, David, you know? your story, your story is, is the story of many, many African-American males um, who grow up in the inner cities, right. who grow up in the urban areas of life, and who are afraid to dream. Mm -hmm. and, and today you've shown them that you can dare to dream. Mm -hmm. You can dream. Not only can you dream, because today what I hear is I hear a changed man saying, Lord, now take me and use me. Almost as though, I, like Isaiah, hear my Lord, mm -hmm. send me. And you're saying, listen, send me from the guttermost, the, uh, send me right. wherever you have to send me. Right. Because there is someone out there who needs to hear what I've been through. Mm -hmm. You know, David, I, that, that's my story, mm -hmm. um, and that's a many people's story. I, I, I grew up in, in South Central Los Angeles, right. California, and, and I had to come to that knowledge. I, had, I grew up, my mom was a gang member. Mm -hmm. You know, jail seemed to be the only thing that I could look forward to. Right. And, and somewhere in between then and that, that, that reality and, and now, God intervened, and, and there's what I like to call the but God moment. Right. You know, I was on my way to do such, and I was on my way to kill some Latin kings, right. but God. Right. You know, I, I was laying on my back in the hospital, but God. Right. You know, I was going to listen to some rap music one day on the radio, but God. Right. And, and the but God moment happened for me. Mm. And that was my mission. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go back. You know, it, it took, it was a long road. It was a long road, but I wanted to go back and I wanted an opportunity to share with people mm -hmm. that you can come out of darkness and right. walk in marvelous light. Yes, you can. And not only that, you can aspire, you can dare to dream, if you will, to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. I never would have thought growing up that I was going to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Never would have thought. And so I'm sure that, um, God has some great things in store for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we operate a number of institutions. You've, you've expressed some desire to go right. to Oakwood. I mean, what do you think you could get? What do you think you can get at Oakwood that, that you don't already have now that you can go and tell somebody about? Um, what do I have now? I, like I said, I just, I, I, just, I just need, I just want more knowledge. More knowledge. You know what I mean? Okay. I just want more knowledge. You know what I mean? Just like when I gained, when I lived for Satan, mm -hmm. I did it to the fullest. Okay. So now since I'm on Christ's side, I, I got to do it to the fullest. Okay. You know, I can't be phony. So I want to know, I want, I want to be equipped to know what I'm talking about. Okay. I Have wanna... you already tried to reach out to some people? 
Oh, yes. Okay, tell, yeah. us, tell us a little bit about some people you try to reach out to. Um, I mean, like my wife, for instance. Okay. You know, she, she, um, she was raised Sunday all her life. Mm -hmm. But through the Holy Ghost and the grace of God, she, she came on over to the truth. She mm -hmm. accepted the truth. So me and my wife and my four daughters, we all got baptized. My Lord. You know, so... So, and, and it's funny because I didn't even realize about, I'm like, okay, Lord, I got one for you already. Mm -hmm. I got one. Mm -hmm. That's a start. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I still got family members and friends that I discuss and, and talk, talk with, but it's not over. As long as I got breath, I'm, I'm going to keep on attacking. Mm -hmm. Even her uncle, you know what I mean, try to get him to come on. But we had talks, but like I said, plus I realized it's the Holy Spirit job Absolutely. to convict. And to change. Absolutely. At absolutely. first, I was trying to do it in David flesh, and that's you can't do that. So, so I'm learning. So I'm just looking forward to whatever God got for me. Amen. You know, so Amen. I'm just gonna stay humble Amen. and do what the Lord want me to do. Amen. You know, so that's what already I'm bringing souls to Jesus. You know, David, your testimony is a powerful testimony, um, and again, it is the testimony of so many who have lived that lifestyle. Uh, and who want to come out but don't know that there is something better. Right. We try our hand at sports. We try our hand at entertainment. Mm -hmm. And when the bottom falls out of that, we're left seemingly with nothing. But God sometimes uses those rock bottom moments to say, here I am. And when we give him our hand, he leads us to higher heights. Right. You know, David, uh, I believe that God is going to do something incredible in your life. I believe he's already done something, but I can see you... Um, going to going off to college mm -hmm. and and then potentially pastoring um just continue to dream okay. just continue to trust jesus um your testimony is an incredible testimony and i think that what we have to have in our minds today is that there are many other david butlers out there mm -hmm. and we as a christian people have to set ourselves up in such a way that we can go and win and witness to the David Butlers. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 onward, he talks about separating the sheep from the goat. And what he does and what he uses to determine the difference between the two is very imp important, very poignant point. He says, I was in prison and you didn't visit me. And, and in saying that, he's saying, I was in the downtrodden places and you didn't come. And so David, be encouraged that God has seen you and now he wants to commission and to send you. And that is an awesome responsibility right. and an awesome opportunity. Right. It's a privilege. I, I say this as we bring this to a close. Dare to dream. Today we have seen and heard the, the testimony of a person who was a gangster disciple and is now a disciple of Jesus. God bless you.